Anyway, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for July 18th, 2022, here at the Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, good evening, audience, council members, administrators. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Absent. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Councilman Roadwell. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And moving on. Tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Father, what would we think? on the regular scheduled council meeting for uh, July 5th, 2022. Second. Any discussion on those minutes, council? And when you're ready, please. All right. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook is absent. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Those minutes pass. Six. Zero. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to communications. Uh, we dropped down to uh, something I was pretty excited uh, to uh, be able to take part in tonight. Um, for those of you who have lived in the area or, or are familiar with the area, if, or if you're one of those people like me as kids and it has to rush home to get things done and you stop at Lee's Famous Recipe and get a bite to eat because it is the best chicken in the world and it's super convenient because it's here in New Carlisle. Uh, Scott Griffith and his lovely wife Kim are with us tonight. We're going to be honoring them with the key to the city. Uh, they are both huge parts of our community, not only from the aspect of you know having a local business here. He's owned numerous other locations, I believe in four different counties. Uh, the, the home office for Lee's Recipe is also here in New Carlisle uh, when Scott owned it. And uh, they've, they've both done a tremendous job as far as being a part of the community in so many different ways. Um, you know, working with numerous groups, uh, you know, and you know, donating to uh, numerous different groups as well. Uh, but you know, just basically being a, a big supporter of the community in every way that any person really could be. Uh, it's important to have those kind of people in our community. Uh, with, without people like that that make up the backbone of a community or and or new for a while, uh, you know, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the you wouldn't have that feel of what we have without people who, who go that extra mile to, to, to make the community what it is. So I would like to uh, ask Scott and Kim to come up here, please, so I can present you a key to the city. Are you going to grab some pictures, Mr. Bridge? Uh, yeah, some pictures. I'll read this off, you guys can both come up here. <laughs> Um, so I'll read this real quick. So Ken Scott Griffith. Since 1973, the Griffith family has operated the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Restaurant in New Carlisle. They've also located their franchise headquarters in New Carlisle in 1980, overseeing Lee's Restaurant in four counties. On behalf of the city of New Carlisle, the mayor wishes to issue Ken and Scott Griffith to the city, recognizing their many years of community service and charitable contributions. Uh, 2022, New Carlisle. So, I know we could go on and on for, for all the things you guys do. We'd be here all day. I know you were a mentor for a student through the FYI program, I believe, more not working with students. So, I mean, it's just a drop in the bucket of what, what these two have done for the community. So, we thank you very much for it. And they feed you for a while. They, they feed us when we're, when we're hungry as well. I didn't want to. Oh, 
There's a little stand in there for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? I don't know. They won't. That's what our grandkids wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I just, uh, real quickly, I want to thank you, Mayor, and uh, the council, and, and the staff of the city, and uh, really, most importantly, all the folks who have uh, supported us, you know, at Lee's Famous Recipe over the years. I mean, this is our 50th year in business. last 30, Kim and I have run it, and we've had our office here all that time, and uh, we've just always had a great relationship with the city uh, and uh, with the citizens here. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, we appreciate this honor. Welcome. Thank you guys for everything. Scott and Kim, you're welcome, obviously, to stay for this entire meeting. If you don't want to, I completely understand. <laughs> so, um, anyways, moving on to, uh, let's see here, uh, uh, the 2023 through 27 Capital Improvement Plan Review and Discussion. Mr. Bridge, I'll hand that back to you since you've been working so hard on it with your administrators. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. Uh, so we have to submit a, a, a five-year capital improvement plan at least three months before we adopt our operating budget. So this is actually step two in the process. We passed our tax budget. This is step two of that. And then we'll go on to, to step final third step was our operating budget. So over the years, we've actually kind of really improved our capital improvement plan to go from a wish list to what we actually truly need. And you also may see council, um, as last year, we started taking things off of here and put more towards a maintenance and repair on our actual budget. So you may see some numbers that are historically lower, but you'll see them um, historic uh, uh, higher on the actual budget when we looked at repair and maintenance, maintenance and stuff. So in the past, we've kind of went through each department and discussed it. So I'd like to extend that same format, if you guys don't mind. If there's anything, we'll go down by each, uh, each, each department per se. If there's anything on that particular line item you would like to discuss, just raise your hand or something. And one of us three can be happy or four. We got fire chief with us today. We can definitely explain why we need that purchase. So we'll start with city council. That's under uh, our general fund. So we don't have any capital improvements um, until 2025, um, and that is $20,000, and that is strictly for technology updates. Uh, rather be new iPads, uh, laptops if you need to use those to do your job, whatever the case you guys may be. Um, the laptops, I mean, the iPads we got, you're pretty, pretty beefed up, so I think they should hold. Uh, I would like a placeholder in there for future reference, whether that be 25 or 26, that could be up to council. But it's at least a reminder that at some point in time we do got to look at that. So if council's okay with that being there as a placeholder, we can move on. If you guys would like to discuss that, we can discuss. I don't see it ever needing 20. And I'm not saying your number's wrong. I, I don't think we'll need it, but yeah, I'm, I have no problem with being there at all. You never know. Your iPads are about 800 for you know, They can be about 800 bucks a piece. Yeah. So times that by, you know, that could be Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I completely under, I yeah. wasn't judging. Which, sure. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, how, when did you, when did they buy these uh, iPads and how old are they now? No. Year, year and a half? Two years? During COVID. So those are two years old? Uh, they were, they were not brand new models. I think those are from 16 or 17. So don't quote me on it. So they're a few years old, but they are iPads, so they are made to last. And for what we, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of my mouth. I say, for what we use them for, I don't see why they won't last another five years or more. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys want to see that reduce and move back, or do you want to keep it how, how it is? I, I would think that the 20,000 would, would stay, only because things are going to keep going up. And in 25 or 26, whenever the purchase is made, 20,000 may not be enough. That would be sad. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we'll move on to the city manager, if that's okay. Uh, so we have 5,000 for technology uh, upgrades for myself. That is also in the same year, 2025. Again, I'm not anticipating anything. My desktop and my iPad are pretty well stacked. Again, just a placeholder. Should something come up, it, it, it's there. <coughs> Any questions or comments on that? <coughs> nope. And then the 
planning department, um, citywide enhancements. So that's just going to be our catch-all. If we want to put a park bench somewhere or flower baskets downtown, um, we're figuring a twenty thousand dollars for next year. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit I want to go after to get get that. Then we have subsequent years of twelve thousand, twelve thousand, fourteen thousand, and fourteen thousand. Okay. And then under parks, we have shelter house upgrades. We have 15,000 skates uh, slated in 2026. I know uh, Mr. Kiko and his crew, we did some uh, equipment, up, uh, I mean, not equipment up, upgrades, some shelter house upgrades this year with the handicap spacing. Um, we didn't know where council's head at would be with wanting to do a kitchenette on this particular shelter. Um, we do have the other one being built um, hopefully by the end of this year, right adjacent to where we're at now, that is going to be uh, outfitted with a kitchenette. But I know there has been discussion with past council about doing something here too. So that's where we would put that. Um, if that's some council still wants to entertain, we can place hold it somewhere, maybe in 24, 25. So we're not impacting our next year's budget with that. Um, is that something council wants to discuss or just hold off until maybe a year or two down the road? Uh, my two cents on it, since we're going to be getting the new one with the kitchenette, I think, it would, you know, just to test the waters, maybe leave it how it is. That way we kind of have two options, because I'm assuming the new one will be a little bit more expensive to rent, since it's going to be newer with more amenities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, so you kind of have two options also. So maybe yeah. a cheaper one versus a little bit more of a pricier one. So. Yeah, I like that, too. That's where my head was at with that, too, as well. Council, any other feedback on that? Use the other one to test the waters so on demand. Okay. All right. Was there anything under parks that stood out uh, stood out to council that you that everyone anyone wanted to discuss? And I would like to bring attention to the wood chipper and the trailer utility equipment. So something new this year is sometimes we split purchases through departments, and it will say fifty thousand dollars in parks or fifty thousand dollars in streets. So you just, you can't kind of connect the dots. So what we did this year is I put wood chipper, and right below it we put fifty thousand dollars total in a split with who the fund was from. So when you look at the wood chipper under parks and also the trailer utility equipment, that trailer utility equipment is actually a $240,000 purchase. 60,000 of that is coming out of your parks budget and the remaining will come out of your streets, water and wastewater. So hopefully council can use that as a tool to help kind of connect those dots with those purchases. I have a question. Yeah. Can you give me an example of bike path equipment? Uh, bike path equipment could be um, exercise equipment. It could be something to clean along the path. Um, it could be something for repair. Howie, anything you want to add? Yeah, to it that? could be. It could be any maintenance item that is over the threshold limit, or it could be a piece of uh, usable equipment by a citizen over that threshold. So it could be anything. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir, two hundred forty thousand dollars for a trailer and utility equipment. What are you buying? Well, I'll do. To, I'll give a little bit of an explanation. <laughs> Just a quick, it's gonna come last up. time I bought a trailer, it only yeah. Took well, it, it could. It could be. It, it, there's a trailer that'll probably come with it. So we li leave it general. One, this could potentially be a bobcat, a tractor with a um, boom arm mower, or any kind of uh, recon like reel head. So the this type of machine uh, you've seen probably in the county, the township, they got a big arm off the side and it will take down brush or uh, cut back any kind of highway, right-of-ways, easements. I mean, it'll mow down a tree. So we're using it to maintain water, wastewater, easements, parks. Um, basically, 235, the pike or, or East Lake by the pool where we just have, we get growth. And then we used to contract with Bethel Township. We contract with Clark County. And just like us, they just can't get to us on a routine basis so why don't we get our own piece and we can do it whenever we whenever we can are you talking about there by the woods by the pool that little strip going out of town yeah that, that would be part from of the, it from the sign in that's only what about i'm gonna guess 50 foot yeah we got that move that with a you can't move that with a z we mow the grass not the trees not the brush oh you this is going to cut trees yeah this is okay. the brush tree this has nothing to do with grass okay yeah. You said a mower, you know, like sidearm a mower, and I'm thinking, I see them cutting <laughs> hills with them all the time. Yeah, these are boom arm mowers, boom arm flails, they call them, um, or the real heads where you might see uh, the county and ODOT use them. They look like two drum rollers, mm -hmm. and basically they'll go right on a stump like this and just chew it up. So across from Water Dog, um, all the brush that grows over kind of on the bike path, our easement that goes behind Howard's down between the fields, 
we got eight inch trees out there now and I was out trying to do some surveying and just can't get through there. So we just need to go through clean up easements. We have some by Kessler Farm where we have sanitary easements to maintain. Um, it just, th this piece would be what that would do. I was just curious what you're buying for a trailer for two. It's a pretty significant time. piece with the trailer to haul it okay. if need be. Okay. So you think right, we should do you. utility equipment slash trailer? Yeah, put that two words. You good, Mr. Lindsay? Yeah, you're, you're fine. Yeah, the right. utility part's what? I thought the utility trailer, I'm going 240 grand. Right. I just can't put a whole lot in one of them. Mr. Ballin had a question. Do you know how much we spend in hiring that done now per year? Yeah, so usually uh, Clark County or whoever we get, it's a couple thousand easy each year. Um, now we're back to using a um, private company. I haven't got his quote because he's going to do some park, uh, moving um, park work for another property owner um, that we're, we're kind of encroaching on his property. It averages, it should be a couple thousand dollars easily every year, just in small pieces. I haven't put it all together to what we do, 235, and we have not done the easements just because most of those guys will not bring those uh, recon heads over and do that work for us. Okay. Good. Anyone yeah. else? Mr. Roadwell. Um, under Parks, Howie and, and Randy, we got three tennis courts out here, and um, I'm sure you guys are aware of a ball. Bocce ball is the new craze. Um, I'd like to see maybe one of those tennis courts maybe get repurposed for a bocce ball court. And we would just do that, probably maintenance. It'd be just striking the things. So we're all down with that. We would, I would suggest council discuss that and then we do that by motion. Okay. Are you okay with that? Or fine with that? Do you want else? Yeah. Back to you, Mr. Birch. Do you want to go ahead and make that motion or you want to wait? We'll wait. Okay, great. All right, so there's no other discussion with the parks. We'll move on to lands and buildings. And uh, look, these, these two are really a lot of Howie's department, so I'll let him chime in. So if there's anything on lands and buildings, we are very interested in getting a generator at the 101 building. Um, we're going to complete the one at the current city building. Fire department has one. We can outfit 101 as well uh, to have uh, that monitor should the electricity go out. Um, that's also our Sarah substation, so we need to keep that in mind. Um, and if it's that bad, we have that second floor that we can open up as a cooling or warming center if need, need be. So I think it's very crucial that we get some back battery backup for that one. Um, I'll let Howie take the rest, my, uh, with the exception of the digital reader signage board. It's the last item there. It is a $25,000 purchase, but I do want a digital reader board on the side of 101 South Main Street, where the old lawyer sign used to be. It is a high traffic area, so we can put our city events up there and other things up there. There's people coming down 235 heading south, we'll be able to see that reader board. Whether it be council meetings or water bills are out or pool passes on sale, whatever the case may be. Um, we get a lot of complaints about people not using the internet still for notification and we rely heavily on our city web page and Facebook to get the information out. This just be a catch all for those people who don't get to see those. Um, so I think it's money well, well, well worth spent. Any other questions in lands and buildings we can discuss? I just have one and this may not be in land and buildings, it may be in a different, um, maybe under streets or something. Uh, what about the, uh, the streets department facility itself? Would that be under this? Any up, go under actually a different department, it go under streets. Okay, Mr. Sir, uh, city garage upgrades and repairs. What are you planning on doing for a hundred grand rebuilding, tearing it down, building the building? Or, yeah, it would be tearing down the back old section of the garage. There's two pieces one old, one new over here. The hut. Uh, no, no, no. This would be down on Mill Road. Back, okay, that guy. Yep. Um, demo. We got the price for demo around uh, fourteen thousand to get that out of there. And I've had I got some emails and calls into architects to try to get me uh, the rebuild price. I've had some uh, builders down there to give me what they think would be the best build, and they said basically going back to concrete block, concrete, and putting garage doors a different way instead of like a metal pole building. So I'm just waiting on an architect to get back, but we're estimating about 80 some thousand for the rebuild portion of that. So. Is there any thought, I'm sure there has been some thought, maybe conversation on doing something with the huts over here, uh, rebuilding something a little more uh, applicable instead of an airplane? That's what I was getting, <laughs> I was gonna get. We'll get to that in, that in, the, in the department. 
The next apartment, next few departments. That doesn't fall under building and land? <laughs> Maybe it could be under the street departments is probably where we look at it. Okay. So anyway, what we're going to do is change that city garage to upgrades and repair. We'll say city garage, partial demo and rebuild. So it's a little bit more um, explanatory about what the actual process is. Anything else under lands and buildings? Mm -hmm. Nope. Well, so for mayor's court, we don't have anything um, for the next five years. They basically just work off of a computer and some other stuff. So I uh, definitely know they're not, they won't need anything for next year. If that changes, uh, we can definitely amend it um, in years coming up. So that would take care of our general fund. Our general fund totals for 2023 would be 378,000 uh, for year 2023. So we're moving on to our special revenue funds. This is our street department. So um, let's see if it's all on that one page. We do have it all right there. So again, the trailer utility split is listed in there, 6,000. And then we have some miscellaneous equipment and um, any kind of discussion on a new building, uh, this would be a good time to, to discuss. Mr. Mayor, I asked a question, so you can just give it Okay. So the <laughs> street funds, I'm not sure, could, could support building a building. Um, so we should evaluate, I mean, the building is old, that is for sure, um, but it is a street department building that houses vehicles that are not, not the cleanest. So I don't know if we can get a few more years out of it or how do we start saving I mean, for that? The ending balance is $120,000. I'm not suggesting we do that this year. For sure. But I mean, oh, maybe sure. should be put in maybe, I don't know what it would cost to even build it. If you can do this other one, uh, one like that probably costs you a lot more than hundred grand. But if you could, if you could bank maybe twenty five thousand to start with, or fifty grand if you've got it somewhere, uh, towards that part or towards that rebuild, that, that might be something to look at. Because those, those shelters, those, those hangers ain't gonna last forever. They're get, they got to be what uh, sixty years old. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know how long they've been there. Our you know? hut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 160. No. It, it goes way back. And, mm -hmm. and I know there have been some repairs on it. I think some of the sheet metal has been fixed or something like that. No, we've never had an issue with structure. It's always the interior boards and insulation that okay. we have issue with. But okay. the structure itself. I thought it had a leak a few years ago or something. Whatever. Um, down by our windows, we, we get something here and there. Okay. But as far as when you see a panel come out and the insulation has gone, the, the steel structure underneath the, um, the corrugated uh, sheeting, it's all in, it's all in good shape. Okay. I was just wondering if there's any plans in the future of building something real different than that, and if it was square or oblong, you'd pick up a lot more square footage mm -hmm. than something that's a half moon. Just, you know. Sure. That, that's the only thing I'd say. But thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think it's definitely on our radar. It's just a matter of you know when and how much is it going to cost and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I'll just echo the same thing. I'd, I'd like to see them get something, you know, down the road. You know, I mean, obviously not this year, maybe not even next year, but sooner than later, if possible. Would there be the possibility, since, like you said, that is a, you know, it's a utility facility, you know, with you know, dirt and grimy vehicles and things like that. Would there be a way to put, like I mentioned before, when you come up five seven one by a grain over there, so that maybe a tall fence or something to just kind of block it, block it in, so it's, you know, it's not such an eyesore. I mean, you know, it's hard to make something that does dirty work look pretty so if you could at least maybe you know camouflage it a little bit you know so people don't have to you know i don't know what it cost would cost to put a you know an eight ten foot fence there or whatnot but which is only be eight cord and city mm -hmm. just, just yeah we pretty much other than this uh, sweeper which will be gone soon okay. most of the equipment will be gone up front and we hold a little bit of uh aggregate there but everything else has been cleaned up if you go around back everything is stacked everything is organized if, if and when the um, new facility goes in, it would be all concrete or paved, the roads all the way in, and it would be fenced. Like, it'd be like a water wastewater plant. Mm -hmm. We have to go in a gate, and it would be all like those slats going through. So it would be a more of a, uh, a an updated facility than just a gravel road to a Quonset hut. Okay. Uh, and another thing on top, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. So another thing we also need to start thinking about, too, is the city building. You know, I mean, if anyone's looking at someone, a, a department who is packed in like sardines with not a lot of room, it's your city building staff, we're, you know. So those are some things that we're going to have to really in the next, you know. Miss Harris, what do you think? I mean, especially if you see this growth coming in, 
really gauging where we're going to put all the new employees that we're going to have to hire for that city building. I know there's been a topic of discussion now for a couple of years, but do we do a big enough building to house certain departments under, you know, kind of one roof? You know, look at it from that approach, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but there is some definite needs for many new buildings in town, especially the administration building. Um, so it's something we'll have to think about, too, how we're going to fund all that good stuff moving forward. Talking about off of Mr. the mayor's uh, fence idea, we could plant, I don't know what the tree's called, but it's a quick grower and it grows 15, 20 foot, and it can be a natural fence. I don't know what it would cost to put, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them in there, and you would never have to maintain it unless somebody you know, ran into it and you just cut it down. That might be another uh, option. Mm -hmm. And as far as the city building, I believe a few years ago we bought a building for that and it didn't happen. So I would like to see that building become the city building <coughs> and move the sheriff's down to the current city building. The thing with the 101 building is we would quickly, especially with all this growth coming in, we're going to have to be, we're going to be sardined in there too. Because we if we have if over the next if we have, over the next ten years add all this population to our city, there's going to be more staff that needs to be housed, and that one on one building works for what we have now, but it did not allow us to grow all that much. So that's something council will have to decide moving forward. When you guys have that discussion, how do you want to handle one on one and the city growth? We don't want to build something for now. We need to build something that's going to allow us to grow in the next 20, 30 years. But at that, least have some room to, for that growth. But the current building, the 101 building, would lot, would suffice for the city offices for probably the next 10 to 15 years. And in that time, they could be banking money. Now I'm talking to council. We could be banking money, presumably, to to build a more modern type city office in some place in the city, but I don't know, right now I don't know where that would be. I don't know of uh, a lot of vacant land downtown or, or even on kind of the outskirts of downtown, unless you want to buy a block or put it over here where Madison Street was at. You know, that would be an option if you wanted to hold on to that land or mm -hmm. sell it to a developer for, you know, senior housing or something, you know. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll just stop. We'll have a few options when it, when it definitely comes, but Permission. there's something we got to think about in the next five years, you know, how we're going to handle the growth. I'm sorry, something We can talk about it as the years come, but we just got to get it on the radar. We have to talk about this potential growth and the facilities we're going to have to expand mm -hmm. to accommodate that growth. Not only are our wastewater treatment plant have to be expanded, our water, but also that these, these, these buildings that house your workers are also going to have to be looked at as well. You know, even with the current city building, we can do an addition off the back that will help out a great year. That is going to save us a lot of money opposed to building from the ground up. But like I said, when that time comes, we'll give enough option to council. You guys can make that best informed decision. But the 101 building is four times as big as the current city building, and it could be utilized as a city building for the growth of the next 10 to 15 years. You're not going to have that much staff that quick in to, to expand, even with the developments coming in. Uh, the, the sheriff's office, if they was moved to the current city building, would still be more room than they actually need, and they would have room to grow themselves. And then if it wasn't big enough for the sheriff's office because of the expansion, then we could build a couple of offices or whatever on the back of it, and it would be cheaper than going all the way out. And I know what you're thinking. We've talked about it before. Might have been a year or two before or five ago, but we have. And I think putting putting the city offices in the building that we bought for that, and moving the deputies to the other building would work for the next ten years. And in that ten-year period, you could bank money with all the growth that we're supposed to be having that we hear about. You could be banking that money for a modern, up-to-date city building, and then move. But it would be, I'm saying, 10 years down the road. I think it's, I think it's doable myself. I don't know what the rest of the council thinks. Uh, hello, anybody listening? No, I, don't know, I mean, it's, I mean, 
<laughs> for, for something like that, I mean, that's really for another discussion. I mean, for another time. I mean, I mean, but I understand what you're saying. I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen. The, it's not going to happen in the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think the current building, 101 building, would work and have more room than you have now where you're at. And the sheriff's office could be moved down there. It, right now you have how many offices down there? Five, six? Yeah, but it's not a really good place. Well, to I'm not, just offices. You got what, six, let's see, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The front area, nine. So you got eight offices there. Mm -hmm. I don't think the PD needs, will be using all eight offices at the beginning and it leaves room for them to grow. So what I what I can't <laughs> comprehend or what I would uh, I would never recommend council put $800,000 in a renovating 101 for us just to move out 10 to 15 years. I'd rather stockpile that $800,000 or whatever the cost to renovate is and stay where we're at and use that for our new build in the future. Like I said, we're quickly going to run out of room at 101. There's only so much we can do on that second floor. You know, and we get to that that first floor I get it. We do have a lot of offices down there, but it wouldn't be a very it wouldn't be a very conducive, positive environment to work out of because there's zero windows, and that makes a big difference. I knew you were going to say that. It does, but it makes a big difference. It truly does. But I'm just saying it 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 doesn't make sense to me to pump that much money into 101 only for a 10 to 12 year fix, and then move on to something bigger. That's where my head was at with that. But that could also be after the, a new building got built, it would still give you room in the 101 building along with the new building that you could divide some of it and, and spread things out too. Well, if we built, and I don't think it would cost eight hundred thousand dollars to do that. No, it, was, it would be expensive. It was very. It was getting, the reason why we didn't bid it because the cost of materials were going skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's yeah, get back on this because we're, we're, we get, we're, we're it, jumping it, it, to get into a whole other level here. here so, uh, yeah. anything else under uh, where are we at streets? Mm -hmm. Anything else for streets? Back to you, sir. Awesome. Emergency ambulance capital uh, saving for a new ambulance. Looks like a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and each year, 24, 25, 26, and I'm sorry, this is, there's a little error up here. This is why this is a draft. That second 26 should clearly be a 2027. Um, Fire Chief, you want to speak to any of that, sir? What we'll be looking at is replacing the Dodge Medic that we have now, which is our second run medic. Uh, which has got almost 200,000 miles on it. Uh, old, keep getting old. Uh, the, Braun, the new Braun Medic, of course, is the front run medic, but we try to rotate the two medics out every uh, two weeks or a month, keep the miles down, and that medic is starting to uh, show maintenance. Uh, plus, it was bought as a demo medic when it was purchased. And the way the back end, if you ever notice on a medic, when they open up the back door, the back end of it goes down on an air ride and makes it easier to load the um, That's the system that's on that medic is four separate airbags. And we've replaced 19 of those bags so far because it's a mm -hmm. uh, design era in between Dodge and Horton, and neither one of them wants to take responsibility for it. So, uh, but like I said, it's showing a lot of maintenance. We're starting to show a lot more maintenance what it's going out. And by that time, we're going to need to replace that. Uh, and that way, that once we replace that new medic, uh, then we'll have two medics that are capable that we can rotate. And also, to put, if we had the personnel putting two medics in the street, uh, and that way, yeah. those two medics would, set, would be set for probably the next 10 years. Or it should be back for 70, 70 years. Thank you. Council, any questions for Mr. Robo? Uh, Chief, what is a new medic we're running right now? Excuse me, sir. How much is a new medic? Uh, when we purchased Fully the, equipped. When we purchased the Braun Medic price tag with a load system, 200 and right at $260,000. Uh, what we would do was for purchasing a new medic, we would have the load system that's in the Dodge taken out of that medic and put in the new medic so that would save us approximately $42,000 on the price tag. So with inflation of equipment and product, I think we're probably still looking at probably two hundred thirty dollars to $250,000 per medic. Hey. 
Anything else, Council? Sure. Hang on, I have lots of questions. Uh, we're, we're banking 100 grand for the next four years. Is there any possible way to bank some of that, some money for on uh, 23 for that medic or not? Like move 27 up, move one up a, a year? Right now we're so all, we can, we're so all we can get the medic quicker? $100,000 a year right now for a new engine. We're banking that too? Right now the engine that we have is like, it's a 19, it will be 23 years old this year. What's the timeline on the new uh, engine then? New engine. 25? 25? 24. 24? Okay. All right. Thank you. 24 25. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Thanks, So where is that money at? <coughs> In this, the money. It's in the fire. Uh, okay. <laughs> Next line down. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I see. Okay. Moving up here. Right now, the engine is going to be expected out of fund right now. What about the adjustment? 600 and not 600. Right at Are they coming out of the fund? 600 The adjustment we have to do. And all this money, Mr. Mayor, all this money is coming out of the uh, levies, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, we don't need 400,000. Anything else, Mr. Bond? Mm -hmm. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. So, talking to Ms. Harris, we actually do want to move that up to 23, 24, 25, and 26. The emergency capital? Yes. Yeah. Do, do, do we have the money in that to be able to do that? Because, as she said earlier, we only had like a hundred and some thousand dollars at the end of the fiscal year, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what? That was different. That was a different fund. Fund. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My mistake. So we're taking the last year off and doing 23, 24, 25, and 26? Okay. I think the sooner we can get a new medic would be better on the old new medic that we bought mm -hmm. what, two years ago, three years ago, something like that. So, you know, that way to get it into rotation quicker, put the, the current medic on the back line, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it will last another, you know, uh, five or six years after we get that. But if we can bank 100 grand, then probably in four or five more years, we can replace the backup medic and get a new uh, new medic and keep those in rotation. And they do get a lot of wear and tear. Thank you, sir. sir. Council good with that change? Yes. Okay. Uh, moving under emergency operating, um, anything over there that sticks out to you, uh, please uh, give us a question. And Fire Chief, is anything that you would like to discuss with Council? You know, like I said, our, our, our capital is pretty much staying the same. Uh, like I said, we're uh, banking for the the engine. We're also putting for grants for that this, this year, and we should hear something by September if we receive the grant or not. If we receive the grant, then we'd be responsible for 10% of the purchase price. So that's for air packs, did you say, Chief? Yeah, for air packs and engine, we uh, we put in for two separate grants this year. One for air packs and compressors, and one for an engine. Okay. We already grant writer to do the grant writing for us, and like I said you can both of those. We're, right now, we're in a probably a good line to get the air pack grant. Uh, the engine grant is shot at our for, for any department. So, so what's the status on the air packs now? Are they due to you do have some that's expired or due to expire? What our air packs right now are all serviceable, all in service, in time frame, but they're also, they go by what's called a third, um, they go by NFPA series. Mm -hmm. uh, most air packs are replaced after second series. Our air packs are in third series. So they're due to be, start with being replaced. We have already replaced some and replaced some cylinders after they went out. Uh, hydrostat data would it can be hydrostat for the Okay. The, uh, if you get the grant, then those air packs could be uh, conceivably uh, uh, replaced next year in 23 instead of we 24? Get, we get the grant, they'll be able to replace the first 23. Okay. Plus, we've also put money in the budget to replace the uh, air packs if we don't get the grant. And that would be in 24? That would not. That would be actually uh, 22. 
So we have money in the budget this year. Oh, this year, okay, okay. We're waiting until September to see what we uh, come out with with the grants. Okay, so some of the air packs will be replaced at the end of this year then? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Fire Chief, did you cover fire capital on that? Excuse me, sir. You, did you cover fire, fire capital on that? No. Uh, yeah, but yeah, sure. He mentioned fire. the new engine. Okay. Only other thing we have under our fire capital uh, is the engine that we had talked about and also uh, bumper gear. We have 27, or two, excuse me, 26,000 and 27, 28, and 30. The reason that it goes up is just for the cost of inflation. Uh, right now it's approximately $3,000 per set of gear for each firefighter. That's the outfit of one firefighter from uh, Boots to Home. <clears throat> And that year is good for 10 years, whether it's good you, service or not, or good shape or not, that 10 years has to take on service. We've been saving for a new fire engine for a while. How much do we have saved up? I think, Tony, let me do that. It's like a couple years now, two years or three years. We did a hundred thousand last year, and then this budget, so we'll have two hundred thousand plus, uh, maybe a little extra at the end of the year. Yeah. Sure. What, and what we're looking at is with the engine is going ahead this end of this year, uh, signing intent to go ahead and purchase the engine through seven. Uh, we already have the engine spec out. What we want, nothing fancy. It's Base pair for a engine, uh, 1200 GPM, pump, 1000 gallon tank, uh, everything that we need as far as a new engine. But we would not have to pay for that engine for two years because it's a, at least a two year build on, it, on, an, on an engine. Right? And we don't have to put any money down or anything, you know, any money at all towards that engine until it's built and done and that type of thing. So we would still be looking to uh, approximately two years. Sure. But that saves us in between probably fifty to one hundred thousand dollars because they do price increases twice a year. Okay. So, you, Chief, you said it was you've already spec'd it. Has when will that be submitted and a contract signed with them? Will, it, will that be this year or over the end of this year? The end of this year. It all depends on what or what comes out with in September with the uh, grants. With the grants. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Thank you, and moving on, thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to police, um, we have equipment upgrades for 2023. We have a new vehicle in 24. Um, we do want to discuss when the time comes, council versus um, if we want to buy the vehicles outright, like we've been doing. Uh, another option we could have is we would currently lease one, and it also includes the gas and the maintenance and all kinds of stuff. Um, moving forward, I would make the recommendation, depending on the market at that point in time, um, that we could hopefully probably lease some of these instead of buying them outright. We're good for next year, so as we approach 2024, that's something we'll definitely discuss with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yep. Council, any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lindsay? How much is the lease for these vehicles? For a vehicle for I don't know. It's in the contract. I don't have it on me. I think it's maybe. Twelve hundred bucks a month. Oh, Twelve hundred a month. That. Yeah, don't, I mean, it's not even that much. Colin, can you? Um, I can tell you. Twelve hundred. Does that cover insurance also? Mm-hmm. And who, who who do we lease it from then? The county itself. Oh, we lease it it's from about eleven hundred a month. Eleven hundred a month. Mm-hmm. So what does it cost? I know the vehicle says fifty thousand, and that's probably the seventy thousand to buy it and equip it. And what's the cost breakdown a year for insurance and maintenance and I, everything I we have to I buy? I didn't come prepared for that because we're not buying a vehicle next year. Can I get that? Can we get that information? Yeah, it's you included. need a motion? Yeah. No, I don't need a motion, but okay. it's included in the police contract that I don't yeah. think you're on council that uh, they passed last year for this year. So it's included in that. Okay. Yep. 
They passed it last year for this year? Yeah. You, Are we leasing a vehicle now? Yeah, we've been yeah. leasing one from McDuffie for a couple years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of that. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought we had bought them. Yeah. I know uh, the other vehicles, we were buying them outright, and they was our vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, is it cheaper to lease them? I mean, do you, do you have fig any figures anywhere on that for lease versus purchase? Yeah, we have it back at the office. I didn't bring it today. Oh, okay. We didn't anticipate buying one next year, so we will have that discussion in 2024 when we need to buy a new vehicle. Okay. Buy our lease. But I can send you the contract. I, I would like. Had. I'd like to sure. see see what, what the see what the if it's cost effective. We either way. Right now, eleven hundred dollars a month sounds pretty good, and we don't have to buy it and have no maintenance or nothing. Mm -hmm. if it it's is directed. It, you know, they give us an OV. Here. It turns out to be, a, I think, a good deal. It does. Okay. What All else on right, your stuff? No problem. All right, thanks, sir. No problem. All right, so moving on. These Mr. are. Bridge, uh, yeah. May I, sir? Sir. One more question. Uh, the uh, equipment upgrades for next year. What is what? E equipment are you upgrading? Is this a placeholder if they need anything that they can get throughout the year? The, uh, I don't know what rest of council thinks, but I know that some of their equipment, like with everything else, it, it needs to be updated uh, occasionally. And I would be interested to get, uh, and maybe uh, Deputy Major Sack can facilitate that or do you or you can do it or something. So I'd like to know how old their rifles and their shotguns are when they was purchased and how often should they be replaced. You can and get a motion through council for that. That's well, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll put that into a motion. I'd like to know that information because if, if we have a 10-year-old gun out there and these guys are dependent on it for their lives and it malfunctions, I, I think that we need to look at that and know how old these weapons are. The uh, shotgun, the... Uh, I think it's an AR they use. I don't, uh, believe, we, I don't believe we supply the weapons. They're, they're actually supplied by the sheriff's office. Are they supplied? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought we bought them. We have some in our inventory, but they're not used. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So but if they're supplied by the sheriff's office, then they'll, they'll take care of mm -hmm. it. Okay, I, I thought we did. Mm -hmm. I thought everything in the car was ours. No, like I said, we have some in our stock, but those are just... We don't even, did we get rid of those? We just have backup weapons. We have, back, we have backup weapons. Backup, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Uh, and moving on to our enterprise funds. So these are your water, your wastewater, your swimming pool, and some other uh, miscellaneous uh, capital uh, funds in the cemetery. So these are a lot of Howie's, so we'll definitely go through them. So we'll start with the water. Is there anything on the water that you would like to discuss further? Company. How many dump trucks have F the 450s do you have now? I thought we bought one here not too long ago. We we do not have a new dump truck in the in any of the departments since 2001. We've had some pickups, and we have a, a utility one that just replaced a, a van, a 99 van, in water. So the, the 450 you have now is that the one that's got the hole in the floorboard? No, we don't have any of the the dump trucks that have holes in them. The 550 is getting some uh, hinge pins re-welded on, which is Street Department's 550. Yeah. But Water Department's is an F350 dump truck from 2001. We put a new dump body on it, but uh, okay. we're trying to get just get a couple more years out of it. Just we're waiting for government pricing to come back. So if you see mm -hmm. some vehicles pushed out, we are getting zero government pricing right now. Okay. So we're kind of waiting. All right, thank you. Council, any questions on the water? And we will repeat that with wastewater. And the secondary primary clarifier, I'm sorry, that is the primary clarifier too. Sorry, forget I've said anything. Wait a minute, why has this got zero on it? I'm going to do one of those sheets. I'll take this off. I make clarifier too. Yeah, primary. Is there supposed to be money on there? Yeah, this one's supposed to be for this, and this one's already in here. Yeah, why is it? For the pool? Hmm. How much should it be? Remember? Oh, we we are ninety-eight thousand five hundred. So that's for twenty twenty-three. Oh, that's this year. That's that's why that's in this, that's in twenty. So it can be removed. So I can actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. Uh, another question on water. I just happened to think of it. Are we still doing a contract to have the water tower maintained? 
Mm -hmm. uh, that falls off. That that goes into maintenance of equipment. Okay, so it's in right. another yeah. another section then. Yeah, it's, it's in, in the regular budget. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. And we have, and honestly, we have two more years of that uh, one hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah. If you're right. wanting to know, yeah, we have two more years, and then that goes down to like fifty something per year. Okay. Ish. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And how long will the fifty go then? It, it's basically it's life. Um, then in year ten they'll repaint, but we don't have to pay that three hundred, four hundred thousand yeah, dollars to we'll repaint. It. It's yeah, it's just it's a, like a normal contract. Then. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anything under wastewater council would like to further discuss? Well, just one quick question on the clarifiers. Uh, we've got what four? I got four one done in about a year or so ago. So I have three but to go. But the second one's in process, isn't it? The second one's getting delivered here in a week or two yeah, okay. or so. so we'll yeah, have two to go after that. Yeah, and both both of them, I just got like an agreement back, and the other one is uh, just got OPWC. That's in my report. Gotcha. Thank you. You asked my question. All right. Thank you. And then we have the swimming pool. So we left this one blank because we want council's feedback on this. This is kind of a tricky, tricky one. We have the op option of doing the pool liner. Um, and we have the option of, at some point in time, shutting the pool down, demoing and filling it in. I don't know if we're there yet. Um, I do have concerns as the manager putting a lot of money into a pool if we can't get a guarantee that that liner is going to work. On top of that, too, we also maybe have some issues coming up with the boiler system that heats that pool. Um, I don't think it's there yet. I know that the work they do prior to the seasoning opening is preventing a lot of the water loss, and I haven't heard much of a leak about anything leaking. Um, so in my perfect world, I would like to see the pool run its useful life without putting that big thing in if we can't get it guaranteed and then look at our options moving forward past that. Do I think next year is a year to go on that? No, because it's still I think it's still retaining water. Uh, but at some point in time, we do have to look at that aging infrastructure that we have at that pool. And that includes the pool building, the pump system, the heating, and the liner. Um, so council, it's ultimately your decision. We've left it blank so you guys can discuss it. Um, another thing we're doing, and I should have started off this before I started, we do have legislation introduced to you guys tonight to move our capital threshold up from 2,500 to $5,000. All that means is anything under $5,000, we're not going to capitalize and put on here. Anything over, we do. The trend nowadays is to actually increase that a little bit. That's why we have that in front of you. Um, so if you guys do want to add anything onto that and you are anticipating passing that legislation next week, we can put anything over $5,000 that would cost to, that we'd have to capitalize it. Um, I don't know if we need any major improvements for next year that we'd have to capitalize. Um, I could be wrong about that. If you want to fill, fill us in, um, yeah, I'm just not sure. As we go, we're just getting deterioration in the pumping system. Now we saw more this year than what we saw even last year. So I, I think we can do. We can still do some repairs, but I'm starting to see the filters. Uh, we just developed a leak in the pipes in one of the pipes. We have some minor underground stuff. So we just don't know unless you do. You want to do a full. Uh, rework of the structure and do it all at once. Another thing too is if the pump goes out, but we just put money in our operating budget for repair and maintenance on that, we normally would have to capitalize that. So they wouldn't have to do anything with the capital tonight on that. If you're gonna do something for a pump, you would get 70, about 7,500. Well, they're probably a little bit more now, so maybe well, 10,000 for a new pump. But we wouldn't have to put it on the capital to do that. It could be like a repair and maintenance type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's currently sitting in the pool? I know we put money back in the last few years for a new liner, what's currently mm -hmm. sitting in that? I think we got two years saved, Miss Harris. About 80. About 80? About 80. About 80? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, wasn't the pump just replaced a couple of years ago mm -hmm. or not? Yeah. Or was it repaired? That's, about, about, about two years, about two years ago, maybe a little bit more. How many pumps is it, does it have? Uh, it's does it got, have one it just got one big one for the whole facility. Okay. And what is going on with that pump now? Did you say it was leaking? No, so, so what we have issues with a little bit is um, on the suction side, okay, so when the pool was built, it was built with a four inch main drain mm -hmm. and two three inch uh, skimmer lines that come from a search pit. 
it is not getting enough uh, flow from the suction side. It, it is everything underground. So to do this, you would have to tear up the whole building, the whole structural area. So what we've been doing with the Department of Health is we sample on a two, uh, two extra times during the hour where we double the frequency of testing because our pumps, our flows are just under what is required by the state. So it just needs, it needs a lot of work. And then, um, so the design in the 50s, late 50s when they built it, to when it was designed in 2009, I think, is when someone, whoever figured out it's what the filters we need and the pipes we need, that's what got built. And now we're starting to find out that we're, we're having more issues. And one, two, the, um, uh, the state's regulations have gotten tighter. So, we're kind of in the middle of where we have some things that weren't quite issues, but they're becoming issues tenfold with age. So this pool's roughly, what, 60 years old? 53, 53 years old? It was built in Ballpark just out of the sky somewhere. What would it cost to fill it in, demo, and fill it in? Because at some point that's going to have to happen. The cost to, like it's a field? Yeah. Set about 75000 So, what does council think about maybe start? Because we may get another four or five years out of this pool. What does council think about maybe putting some money in there for the future demise of the pool? It's been making money, if I read the report right, correct? Mr. Britt? It's been doing good for the past years. Yeah, well, it's making money so far this year, I believe. From, from uh, <clears throat> so I know, I know uh, Mr. Mayor don't like what I'm saying. And, and the pool's making money, so I, I, I would hate to see it go. But, but it gets <laughs> to the point to, you know, if it's, going, if it's starting to cost more than it's... <laughs> than it's worth, then, uh, you know, we have to make the decision either to, to bury it or dig it up and put a new pool in. And I would not even remotely suggest that we dig it up, put a new pool in, because that would be probably 500 grand minimum, I would think. I mean. You're close to about four or five mil. Oh, so I missed it by you're, four or five. Yeah, you're, quite a bit, you're quite a bit off. To, to redo the structures. Yeah all new pumping system um, and keeping the same size pool with more zones, bringing it up to like a today's uh, yeah. standard. You're somewhere around 2 million for the pool. You're about almost a couple of, a couple more million for the building's pumping system and all the landscaping for it. Yeah, we, had, we had someone last year that came in and gave us a mm -hmm. nice Super pres job. presentation. Beautiful presentation. You good, Mr. Lee? Yeah, I'm good. Rather, Thank than, you. Set, rather than set aside money to fill in the pool, I'd rather set aside money to uh, upgrade the pool, the two to four million. That, that would take a few years. I think the pool wouldn't last long enough to get the upgrade. And, they and said uh, 10 years ago. Pardon me? So that's what they said 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's still here. Well, yeah, it's still, still here. Thrive. It's still thriving. It may last another 10 years, but it only takes one. You know, like uh, Mr. Kitko said, it only takes one of those uh, four-inch lines or whatever to break under the pool or under the under the, uh, the uh, concession stand, and the pool's out of commission. Yeah. All right. Well, it's so, okay. So, but, but I wouldn't have a problem with what you said, banking money for that. And if something ha drastic happens, you could always convert it over to the to the other line. How much would you want to do with that? Do you have a figure in mind that you'd want to start banking? No. What so are, what are, would council entertain maybe at our retreat that we're going to have at the beginning of the year is kind of prioritizing how we want to lay out need of new city building, need of new hut, need of new pool, what's going to benefit the city as a whole moving forward. We're not going to come to a conclusion tonight about the pool. I think it's good for a couple of years. May I suggest we put around ten or fifteen thousand in here for placeholders for some capital improvement that needs to go on. But I think during the retreat, when we set that down, that's a good time to really pinpoint, saying, "All right, what are our goals? What's our objective?" Because there's a lot of big ticket items that we're going to need, and I would recommend 
building to be on priority, high priority or doing a pool. Maybe we look at if we do the city building, we do the pool outside the city building. Group that all into one. But I think we need to have a lot more decisions than, than tonight. Um, I think the pool's done phenomenal these past few years. I don't think anyone wants to see it go. But at some point in time, we're going to have to have that tough discussion of what, what's best for the facility moving forward. Is council okay if we put maybe, Howie, what do you think, 10 or 15 for next year, just in case something comes up? What do you think? Well, sorry, what's the pool balance? So, 44,000, we did not put any general fund money in it this year, but traditionally, general fund does transfer uh, as a supplement. <coughs> so, it's not like it's always this money, but it has done well the last couple of years. Really well. Really well. Really and well. it looks like this year it's going to be the same. It's going to be possible. But. Mm -hmm. So, so that you, if I understood what you said, you have about 40,000 already airmarked if the pool needed it? No. It, well, that's an estimated ending balance at the end of this year. Okay. Our budget. Our okay, budget. so it, it, it's budgeted so if the pool needs it, funds. Yeah, it stays in that fund, separate fund. Okay. I wouldn't be opposed if you if you guys want to put ten or fifteen thousand dollars in there, just in case. If we don't use it, we don't use it. We just move it to the next year. So, do you need a motion for that, Mr. Bridge? Mr. Bridge, what time? Do you need a motion for that? Um, to put fifteen thousand, I believe. In so no, we just do. I'm pool. just going to make it general capital improvements. We we'll do fifteen thousand. Are you good with fifteen thousand, Ms. Harris? Or do you want to go to ten for 2023? Probably ten, but it could. You know, if we do better, we can improve the next year. It's really low this year. Is Councilor okay with ten grand then and going into the pool? capital improvement. Yeah, I mean, if you're okay with that, Colleen, that's, I mean, I'm going off of your knowledge here, so. Yeah, just, for, just for the first year, and then go 15 for the second, you want to do that. You want to put it in now, 2024 is 15? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. All right, Tim. Any other questions about the pool? No? Nope. I think we can talk about it and retreat them okay. more in detail. Yep. So we're on to the cemetery. Um, so we'll do the same kind of procedure here. Anything uh, in a cemetery that warrants council discussion or explanation? How much is it for? Not quite. Did we just buy a backhoe a couple years ago? Did we buy a backhoe a couple years ago? In 2015, we bought the street one, but the one for the cemetery, which is smaller, I think we bought it in 2000. Oh, there it is. Three, four, it somewhere in there. The one we bought is for everything out throughout the city. Is the, was the big backhoe that we want? You can't fit it in the cemetery to dig graves, so it's a whole different backhoe. It's a much smaller one. Okay. Thank you. Just have one. How much does a for sale sign cost? <laughs> a dollar. A one dollar. I've got one at home. I'll give you. And we could definitely look at entertaining that if you guys get some motion. Uh, motion. I'll second it. Seriously? No. <laughs> to sell the cemetery. Yes. Absolutely. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. To look into it. Yeah. I'm not saying go find a realtor tomorrow. No motion needed. Duly noted. Thanks. Well, the motion's on the floor, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, finish Rodewald it. and Lowry second. Yeah, yes, correct. Right. Is that what I yes. And that's that's that was correct. Hey, two. what are you doing? <laughs> To look into hey, look selling, selling the cemetery. The cemetery. All right. right. Recession proof. Okie dokie. <laughs> first. Sorry, second. Good to call the Please. vote. Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Councilman Bond. No. Absent. Councilman Eggleston. No. Councilman Lindsay. No. Councilman Roadwolf? Yes. And Mayor Lowry? Yes. <laughs> that motion fails. You might need a spot there someday, Mike. Right? Nope. <laughs> nope. 
Mine's in Kentucky, so I don't have to worry about it. We tried. <clears throat> Can I explain how, like, it is, that's a, that's a very... You want to go over that just to look, just in general? Like, it's a, or I will, how we go into it, but it's a, it's a lot of wear and tear, not only on our equipment, on our staff, and we make zero money doing it. None. So, it's... I can't say none, but historically the general fund has to supplement the cemetery. Yep. And it has to do with maybe we look at closing sections down that may be old that no one goes to because it's my understanding. And please chime in because you know more about it than I do. Some of these headstones aren't lined up correctly, so it's hard to get any machinery back there. What else? Yeah, so basically I've been to the cemetery board in Columbus based on complaints. And we've won our complaints because if you look at it from an aerial, three quarters of our cemetery was, just looked like it was spitballed. Nothing is in rows, it's hodgepodge. So we have 52 inch mowers, 48 inch mowers trying to weave through with the weed, weed eating and stuff. So we, one, you can't have big mowers. One, you can't go fast. And two, some of the money goes to perpetual care. We have about a hundred and some thousand for when the cemetery gets full, you have this amount of money. A hundred and some thousand dollars will not last long to pay a contractor to maintain that city once it, or maintain that cemetery once it's full. So the big thing is, and, and I was talking with Greg this uh, last week, uh, so many, well, you have, first of all, you have to price your cemetery against other government agencies who own cemeteries. You can't price it against private individuals who charge more. So when we go do rate, st uh, rate studies, we're with West Milton um, and, and a few others. So our rates are quite a bit lower than, than private um, entities. So um, it's just, it is, it's very costly for us to operate a cemetery. Um, you said we typically have to transfer money from the general fund to cover cemetery. Do we have that number from last year or two years ago? Or can, can you get that? Not now, I mean, but maybe by the next Hold up meeting. Pull it up real quick so we have to do it later. It's right there in your we general. Didn't, we didn't supplement in 2022, but it is going to be Almost every other year. Okay. What kind of ballpark? Um, it was 30, 30. 30. about 30,000. Okay. Can, can the cemetery, can we shut the cemetery down and not put any more people in there or not? Actually, uh, once a cemetery, let's say if a pri private organization were to have it and they were to go, let's call it bankrupt, it automatically goes back to the township and the township or back to the city. That's the downside. So ownership of a cemetery can always go back to a government agency. We would have to de-annex it from the city. Right? Yeah, it would have to be, we'd have to de-annex it. But then the other thing too is uh, the actual role by the um, Ohio, Ohio Cemetery Board is, I believe it's um, mow once a month, weed, weed eat twice a season during the growing season. That it's very minimal. So that's why some of these, they barely get touched. So we, we mow every day. I mean, it, it, we don't get off of a mower in a day. Okay. And just FYI, we cannot mow the cemetery in a, in a week. We cannot get it done, the two mowers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Back to you, sir. All right, any questions under cemetery? We're moving on. All right, so the last two are waterworks capital improvement and wastewater equipment replacement. So these are two capital funds for the water wastewater department. Main live, the main live valve replacement, we have that minimum threshold we're going to propose to council at the next meeting introduced tonight from 2,500. Should that ordinance not pass those 5,000 figures, or any, anything valued at 5,000 here will get reverted back to 2,500. So again, this is just a draft. We're gonna enter this next week for you guys. Um, any discussion on um, anything on those two funds that we can address? No, sir. No? Okay. So when we look at our proposed 2023 to 27 capital improvement plan, total of all funds for 2023 is $1,239,000. Um, year after that, uh, a little over 1 million, and then 1 million, 203, and then 673 and 3853. So of course, the subsequent years past 2023, we can adjust. We can adjust 2023 as well, but we're trying to get on that kick where we don't amend the CIP as much as we have normally in the past. We're going to have to at some point in time. Um, so what we'll do is I'll go and make the corrections on here, uh, some of the mistakes that we had, and then this will be introduced as a resolution to council at the next meeting. Just because it's a resolution, we will still not vote on that until the meeting, second meeting in August, because we do have to let it sit uh, for X amount of day to give the public a chance to come inspect it. 
Um, but again, we've done a good job of streamlining the CIP from what it used to be a couple of years ago to this long drawn out document to really watch the beef of what we need. And we achieved that by being realistic and then also moving a lot of things over to repair maintenance. So thank you for your time and thank you for sitting through all that, guys. We appreciate it. All right, got some questions on CIP before we move on. All right. And back to you, Mr. Baird, for the city manager's report. All right. So um, I will say that we I did forget to include Mr. Kitko's report. So he has that right here up, and then we will email it out to council. So I do apologize. I don't know how I missed that, but I did. Uh, so we'll start the city manager report with our police report with Deputy Major Sack. Thank you, members of council, members of administration, members of the public. Uh, the New Carlisle deputies patrolled. 4,782 miles in the month of June. We took 228 calls. Of those calls, we created 41 reports and 41 assists. We had 12 criminal arrests, three felony arrests, seven misdemeanor arrests. We had two warrants in that. We had 48 traffic stops, 30 traffic warnings, 18 moving citations and we conducted 662 business checks. Uh, we investigated four traffic crashes and we had no code enforcement follow-ups. Questions for Deputy Major Sack? All right, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate the report. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Major, Major Sack. And moving on to city manager report, our fire and EMS report with fire chief, chief trustee. Council of citizens. For the month of June, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 73 EMS calls in the city, 7 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had two EMS calls answered by mutual aid by either Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 already being on the response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and three mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Roadwell. Chief, was the uh, fire-related calls, was that, was any of that due to fireworks or was that just something I know in the morning? Uh, one, well, one of those would have been a mutual aid call to uh, up a car to do the fireworks, uh, catching any backyard on fire. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And they had one incident where a, uh, two people were injured, uh, fireworks. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Chief. We appreciate it. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the City Manager Report, our finance report presented by Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public. Our June financials, our revenue that we took in was $734,344.99. And that brings uh, the total year to date of $4,671,000. $535.30. And since we, uh, this report is through June and it's halfway through the year, we are running at about 68% of our estimated revenue, um, bringing in more than what we had budgeted, which is always what we try to do. On the expense side, for the month of June, we spent $690,154.41 for a total year-to-date in the expense at $3,827,044.18, and that is running at 48%, which anything under 50% has been on that too. The banks are reconciled, and they're included in my report. On the monthly income tax collection, um, we did receive in $157,099.17, and compared to this time for the month of June from last year, we're up at 187 
that's on the mayor's court. And then I have your pool for the month of June. And since we start up with revenue prior to the actual start date by selling membership, um, I'm just going to give you the two, uh, year to date. Year to date, we've received in $59,662.77. Right now at $9,229.18. And that's a general overview of any of the reports. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? Your advice yeah. The mayor's court. Yes, sir. The, that does not include uh, expenses like the magistrate, the clerk, the bailiff, correct? No, they will fall about 30 months behind. By the time we got the invoices for those expenses, they'll be in the July report. 30 days. Well, it'll be. You said 30, you said 30 months. You said 30 yeah. months. <laughs> like, great. Well, I was saying, well, we're a little quicker than that. <laughs> <they're gonna> <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll talk to you in three years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they'll be turning them in this month. So we'll I think they'll quit before then. So long. You know how much that would be? The magistrate is $200. Magistrate gets paid $200 a court. And we have court bi weekly? Yes, every, so it's $400 a month just for the magistrate. And then I was, if it's a good time to break in, I wanted to tell council know we're not going to have probably a true representation of what this court makes after the end of the year. And I say that because multiple things happen. We're bound by when the magistrate bills us, um, we're bound by when the clerk of court submits her time, which I think we got her on the schedule. But the biggest thing is like when you sit in a court case, the magistrate may say, hey, your fine is 600, but if you do this within the next amount of months, it's 300. So we could receipt something in July that was, you know, from months prior, you know, so we're not going to have that true, true bottom line until probably the year end. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But for the first month, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out to be honest with you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mayor, anyone else? Back to you, sir. We, oh, actually, yes. Yeah. Second. <coughs> All right, Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes six zero on the agenda. It asks for a motion yes. to accept the. Uh, do you want from here on out? You want to do that? We have two separate motions. Even though that mayor's court is included into her report, the clerk of court did request that that be a separate approval. Okay. Uh, that we approve the mayor's report. Second. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's accepted six zero. You, Mr. Bridge. And moving on to the city manager report, our service report, Mr. Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off with the Public Works Department. As you notice, the ADA parking spots here for the Smith Park Shoulder House have been completed. I did meet with this uh, sweeping contractor, and this has been adjusted. Uh, Mr. Bridge has signed the agreement um, to get sweeping done. It's going to be in a couple weeks. It was supposed to be sometime in the spring, but um, I've been talking with a guy, and he's basically running out of Cincinnati, the whole region of Ohio, uh, for sweeping. So he apologizes for it taking so long. So, and then he's already signed, I believe it was both. So the fall sweep is already included. So we don't have to go through this whole Marega Monroe again. So it is for post sweeps. Uh, tennis court cleaning is complete. Um, we, I have worked and secured a contractor to um, get the bike path uh, right away, park work done, and a few of those others I was talking about doing for our um, uh, right away areas, those are uh, locked in. Final restoration of the old Adams water tower site is complete, has been seed and um, uh, basically uh, hydro seeded with a mat, so that is done. And now we got some rain, so hopefully it didn't wash it out. Um, moving down to the sewer department, uh, the secondary clarifiers are moving along. The big one is OP, uh, Mr. Bridge just signed the primary number two clarifier agreement with OPWC. So I got the agreement from the engineer. I'll be proceeding with that. And um, hopefully we have a contractor uh, awarded by the end of the year. 
2022 road reconstruction is, as you know, nothing is really going to take place this year as far as any kind of uh, serious paving. I am working with ODOT right now to number our ramps and uh, get our curb work done before late next spring. And then as far as CDBG application for Fenwick, I believe we um, are in good, have a good shot at getting this, but I uh, have not heard anything yet. Uh, Carlisle Park phase one upgrade project. There's really nothing new at this point. Um, I believe we got a good chance at getting awarded, but I have not heard a, a confirmation of that. And as far as the Nature Works grant, uh, Mr. Bridge did get a just a notification that they do have our application and that they're under review. And with that, uh, I can answer any questions on the report or anything else. Mr. Vice Mayor. Is it the same people doing street sweeping that we had last time? It will be, yes, it will be uh, sweep, contract sweepers. They've changed their name again. Um, but yes, it'll be the same organization. Because in previous years, the day before they would sweep the streets, they'd go around for put up signs, don't park here, we're going to sweep the streets tomorrow. Uh, most of the time, ours do not. The last time, they came during regular business hours and downtown block did not get swept because cars were parked there. Yeah, I had him go down three times down Main Street to hit it and told him they had to be there before 7 to get Main Street done. So they did get it once last year, but they did, it took after the two times to tell him to go back down there. Will there be advance notice? We're going to put it in the paper. They do not mark um, with no parking. Now, we as a city could go down there and just maybe hit the Main Street with no parking, but we will put it out on our site, say, hey, try to get everything off the streets. We'll put it out you know, as much as we can, council meetings and stuff, once I know a date. Well, it's going to be a whole week. So um, if the, the cost for them to do no parking throughout their whole route was, a, it, was a, it was over half plus the cost of just the sweeping for the labor to move uh, no parking sign. So it would probably been closer to 10 to 12 to sweep. So I think we're right now at 7,400 or 7,500 to sweep okay. one time. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Sir. I've noticed the last couple of years or so when they swept, they had a big dust cloud behind them. Can well, they do something like water to alleviate that? So they, they are supposed to use water. On the very first day last year, I can tell you that we assisted them in getting some repair parts because they're out, they bring their vehicles up out of Cincy. And it, it's, been, it's been a struggle because both companies that do the area that I've contracted with, it just doesn't matter who you get. Um, somebody's got repairs. You got to go back and follow them up. Depends on who their new driver is. It, it's, it's a pain. So we try to stay up on them. And I can tell you, they swept the old section of town like five times because they kept missing stuff. So, but we don't pay them until they go hit all those areas. But yes, they're supposed to be putting water down. There's at times the guy, he's not paying attention and he runs out of water and he's got a dust cloud, which is behind him. Yeah, exactly. and he's looking at his broom or broom down yeah. his uh, window. Yeah, but everybody else sees that dust cloud. Oh, I've gotten plenty of calls. We make the call immediately. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, sir. I just have one, Mr. Kitko. Uh, when we re uh, when we put in the parking lines up there on Main Street, which I think is great, I think it's helped out the parking lot up there. It's starting to get faded. Is there any chance we could get those touched up this year, or maybe? But uh, okay. I mean, you're going to know this one immediately, maybe in a pot. Something will maybe last longer, so you guys don't Well, we, they'll be repainted in the spring when they get resurfaced. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're, mm -hmm. we're going to be resurfaced in late spring. So, And then they'll probably do those in thermo. Not a super big fan of thermo for parking spots, just because they are actually elevated slightly right. and can hold water. But I'm surprised. Um, I might reach out to uh, the company who did our spraying and just see if there, did we get some paint because I, I believe they wore a little faster than now, granted straight lines don't get run over as much as these lines because people drive down even compared to parallel parking lines you don't drive over them you pull in between them where these they constantly get drove over so we'll see we'll see if they got even a better product than paint I mean thermo will definitely hold up but Main Street, though, you're looking to resurface probably spring, early summer? Well, it's already slated to be uh, spring. It'll be ODOT when they award the contract. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Mrs. Um, what would be the chances of getting the overbrook on the east side of Main Street between the Lewis and the Main Street? Would that be part? That's all included in, in the, um, the work with the company I have hired to get done. The, the company I have to do all the easements, the bike path, 
the property at Brubaker, okay. that's included in that. Okay. Is that also, I'm sorry, does that include the trees downtown too? That part does not include the trimming, no. This is all brush and clearing. Who does the trimming of the trees? I'm going to get to that, guys. Okay. You sorry, sir. Is you good, you good, Ms. Eggleston? Good. I'll, I'll get to that. You good, Ms. Eggleston? Yep. The alley that runs from Pike Street to the back of the Sonic Lodge? That is private. And um, we're going to be working with uh, the code enforcement. We found out that that alley actually is owned by CBS. CBS or Rite Aid? I'm sorry, Rite Aid. Rite Aid, that okay. corner. Yeah. CBS and something like that. They own that alley? Yeah. Yep. What about the alley, the north south alley there? Parallel to Main Street. That would probably be ours, but I'll double check. We were actually looking at it not too long ago because a uh, fiber optic firm is working with that company on a possible purchase. So that all come up here about a little less than a month ago about that purchase. Uh, They're just looking for a place to place fiber, fiber optic equipment. All right. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Vice Mayor. No, so good. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Gitko. And moving on with the city manager uh, report. So under discussion topics, says public infrastructure attorney, I will be uh, uh, hiring a consultant to help us through this growth we have coming up. Um, he is out of Columbus. He does a lot of public infrastructure work. He is actually working with the city of Springfield on some of their developments. He's going to be great resources, not only for me to use, for Mr. Kitko to use, but also more importantly, our attorney to use. Uh, Jake is, is not a land attorney. Um, Jake is, um, he's a great attorney, but even talking to this public infrastructure attorney. Um, hmm. Sorry, I was doing yeah. the same thing. I was like, that's okay. not every day you see a yeah. tree coming yeah. down. So. <laughs> you want to plan it? So <laughs> talking to Jake, we think that's best moving on. So he would, we, he would just, he would fall under our, our law contract. So I'll get with Ms. Harris about beefing that up a little bit. I don't think we're going to have to beef up that line I'm all that much because Jake uh, is very fair with his billing on us. Um, but I think it, you know, it's our best interest to kind of help uh, have a professional help us um, with this with this growth. Um, moving on, we have a professional property maintenance contract. So some of the things that we've always tried to get, it, it really just comes down to, to manpower. Um, Mr. Kiko's staff is very, very thin due to the amount of grass we have to cut and how much they have to do during the summer. So. Um, I am. I did execute a contract with professional property maintenance. Uh, they will be uh, attending to all of our city signs and some other locations in town to plant flowers and maintain those beds throughout the year. So that takes it away from Mr. Kitko. So you're going to see that great improvements up to Addison New Carlisle split, some other locations in town that we're going to actually beautify. On top of that, I am going to look at hiring an arborist to handle our trees downtown. Studebakers did it for the, did it free of charge for the longest of times. Uh, but since that's no longer an option, we do need to have someone come in and do it. We have 58 trees along Main Street that's going to be included into this contract. Um, so I'm um, going to get with Ms. Harris about allocating some funds for that. But there is a need for that because there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that we just cannot get to as far as that beautification just is because of the other stuff that we have to accommodate to. So I think moving forward, Council, everyone's going to see a big, big change in the beautification, especially in our Main Street areas of downtown. So we're very excited about that. Um, we do have a traffic study come on. I did was asked when was that going to be completed. We did reach out to them. They have said hopefully by the end of August. So as soon as we have that final project, project we will definitely share it with Council so Council can start their review of the traffic study. And it is all four developments, how it's going to impact our roads uh, as a whole, not just one individual development. Uh, so the Miami County annexation, that is the DDC management one. As we established at the last meeting, we have a preliminary plan hearing on August 31st, 2022, here at Smith Park, that's at 6.30 p.m. We also have a, sub a subsequent meeting, um, uh, action on that preliminary plan scheduled for September 28th, 2022, also here at the Shelter House. So we do have a pre-annexation agreement that both attorneys are working on. Um, that's going to be submitted to council. All the pre-annexation agreement does is just kind of goes and reviews the type of annexation they want to do. Uh, really just outlines the, the time requirements at each um, each one of those. They're doing a, want to do an expedited type two. 
Um, so our attorneys are still working on this. So I can't give it out to the public, but I can generally tell you what's in it. Talk about your zoning change, your type two timeline, just considering TIF with this tax increment financing, and then um, how they're gonna handle the platting of the preliminary final, uh, preliminary and final plat. And the rest is just general contractual terms. Uh, the town attorneys are working this out. This is a standard, standard agreement that happens when you go through annexation. I don't want to uh, answer too many questions about it because I'm not I'm not an attorney. I, I don't want to step on Jake's toes, but I at least want to let council know that it is coming. Um, since it is an attorney client privilege document, I can share it with city council should you want to see it. So just give me a call tomorrow if you want to stop it and take a look at it. Um, other than that, we have upcoming legislation uh, projects for council to I review. Yes. Can you email that out to us? I will. If council would like it, you can give me a call or send them out. Sure, but again, it cannot be shared with right. the public. It cannot leave your inboxes. So, if council would like it, I could definitely shoot you, but it, it's an attorney-client privilege document, so just keep that in mind. Um, other than that, upcoming legislation projects and council for review approval. We have the annual assessments. This is something we do every year. Um, so that's gonna be introduced on 8-1. We'll action on that on 8-15 and still working on the other policies and uh, audits I am ongoing with council. So um, that's all I have for the city manager report. We will happily entertain any questions. And before we move on, thank you to all the council members who showed up not only at community cleanup, but also at the subsequent events at the farmer's market. Thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the sandwich. Sandwiches? What? Subway. Yes. Oh, oh, wait, I wait, all of us left. You knew I shouldn't have went on vacation. <laughs> hey, they were good Subway sandwiches, man. <laughs> they were pretty good. All right, any questions for Mr. Bridge on the uh, report before we move on? <clears throat> all right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. We appreciate it as always. So. Uh, up here and <clears throat> moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please leave uh, go to the podium, your name and address. Try to keep it five minutes. When this turns red, your five minutes is up. Talk to Mr. Roadwalk. <laughs> You're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. You can, you can. I'm, I'm don't you don't know? They ain't telling me. Yeah, turn, turn it up. They outside. can add more clothes. All right. That's why I wore a suit today. Just going up. Dude, that that threw me off. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Craybuck. You're all over now, man. Hey. Public speaking. Oh, bring it in. I thought she's trying to get something out of the city. Uh, harvest it in July. So we're getting ready to plant garlic again in September. Mike, I'd like to present this to you as an auxiliary gavel if you so need it. But yes. It is the best garlic from the ground. We have other ground crops like potatoes, radishes, sweet potatoes, um, what else? Uh, Jerusalem artichokes, radishes. That's above ground. Okay. So the flowers represent the above ground crops. And our mayor has planted some popcorn. And we are doing cut flowers. and. Um, you know, lots of other crops, tomatoes, but I don't like the rain. Um, we've got 100 tomato plants in, so we should have a lot of different types of plants at the um, community garden, at, at the um, farmer's market, sorry. So you're probably wondering what this was. I planted this the first year that we were at Westlake, and we had a drought that year. We had no water out there. John and I were hauling water that first year. And then the second year, we had a one-month drought. The first year was a three-month drought. And then um, last year, this, this is what grew last year, and it's as tall as the ceiling here. This is actually the queen of the prairie, and I planted it because I was intrigued by that. I didn't know what it was, and I put two plants in about five feet apart. The first one almost died after that drought in the first winter, didn't get any fronds. These were two of the fronds. Right now, um, I just pulled these out of the ground today from last year. It, it, the book says it gets between 9 and 10 feet tall. I would say ours grew 9 or 10 feet tall. And on the top of it, it throws all these little yellow daisy flowers. If you've never seen the Queen of the Prairie, come on out 
to the native garden. Um, it, th there's about, each of the plants now has about six fronds that are between five and six feet tall. And I think with that rain, they're gonna get really tall before they throw their flowers. The flowers usually are out from August to September, but it is the queen of the prairie. And it was the plant that stood above all the other prairie plants. So we're learning a lot at the, at the garden, both in how we plant and our um, produce that we're selling at the market. And, uh, the plants that teach us a lot every day. So I just thought I'd give you this report from the community garden. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Ms. Craywalker. Any questions or feedback? For Pat, I'll just say real quick, I've enjoyed being up there. I, I don't have the time to go up there as much as you guys do, but um, it's, it's been neat. Uh, I wish I had more time to spend up there to help do more things, but uh, it's definitely been neat being up there to meet some of the people. We protected you're today. Oh, thank you. you can either use it, use it as a gavel or cook spaghetti here in a minute. Salsa. Salsa. So. Some tomatoes. All right. All right, then uh, next. I just have one uh, really short question. I'm Don Black from a Buffalo Township, Minor County Trustee. These annexation agreements, I think I understood you to say we have uh, agreements from both attorneys. Is one of those at Bethel Township, Miami County? Oh, are you asking me? I'm sorry. It was your report, I believe. I didn't hear the question, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the question is, I believe in your report you had said you had annexation agreements back from both attorneys, I believe, was what your words were. Is one of those agreements the Bethel Township, Miami County attorney? Um, no. Thank you. Not. Yep. I just want to make sure you didn't have an agreement with us because I know you have. Well, you would know that, though, right? I would hope so. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, it's worth the uh, All right, DDC. Moving on. Anyone else? Good evening. Matt Mills, 285 Delaware Drive, New Pearl, Iowa, Ohio, 45344. A couple of general comments to start off with the positive. I really do appreciate members of the council that do try to communicate on social media with their electric, electric, electorate, I'm sorry, and try to set the record straight. It's appreciated. Um, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of disinformation out there, and so I appreciate everyone trying to communicate accordingly. The reason why I came here tonight, um, I made a post a couple of weeks ago about zoning in New Carlisle. I did some research about zoning in New Carlisle, and I wanted to make sure it made it into a public meeting. Um, that being said, I looked at the zoning map that New Carlisle currently has, and in short, they have about seven different zoning types of residential, R2, low density, R4, one to two family, R5, medium density, R7 high density, R12 multiple family apartments, and R5, which is what the current Scarf Road, Lake Road property is. Um, to date, the only other place where there is an R HUD on the New Carlisle zoning map on the website is Twin Creeks. Um, R2 low density, uh, minimum lot size per New Carlisle zoning is 21,780 square feet, which makes up 27.5% of residential zoning area. Now, homes currently zone area. R4, minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet, which makes up about 11.8% of residential zoning area. R5 makes up the majority of New Carlisle residential zoning area, 8,000 square feet, or 32.6% of residential zoning area. R7, high density residential area, minimum lot size of 6,000 square feet, which only makes up about 11.6% of residential zoning area. R12, multifamily residential, 3.6% um, lot size is not applicable here. RPUD, again, the only place where this is applicable is in Twin Creeks, which makes up about 12.9% of residential zoning area. What I do want to point out is that in Twin Creeks, the average lot size is 10,800 square feet, comparable to R4. Residential lots per New Carlisle Code 
as an ARP HUD can be as small as 50% of an R4 lot or 5,000 square feet. Currently, DDC development has residential lots set at 6,000 square feet. I did a little bit of research on ARP HUDs, and someone may counteract this, but basically allows the developer to cram houses um, into a much smaller area and try to skirt R4 de development areas. Also, an ARP HUD is a mixed choice of living and working environment, i.e., ARP HUDs allow for residential, commercial, and industrial locations to be put together in the same lot. Uh, so, summary, if you do an effective calculation of current ARP HUD, which is Twin Creek, and calculate it together, the majority of homes in New Carlisle, 51.3%, 51.3% have over 10,000 square foot lots. It currently zoned as approved with 600, with 6,000 square foot lots at Scarf Road and Lake. It would be a vast minority of current lots in the city limits and will be uncharacteristic to what is in the uh, Questions based upon this information, and if you can't answer these and understand, they're just questions. Does council have to approve lot sizes legally as they have been applied for? or can they reject until developers select zoning type the council wants? Second, Mr. Bridge, I've had multiple emails with you on this. I don't know if it's linked to council. Will the city require the developer to collect impact fees from new home buyers, not from the developer, from, but from new home buyers, and donate them to the impacted local schools as part of the approval of zoning requests? Matt, I'll just one quick comment on, on, on yours is, I mean, I, I would assume the council could, you know, I, guess I would say council could turn it down immediately you because know, I'm not thrilled with what they come back with on their, on their second pass with us. So, I mean, that's a whole other, you know, conversation per se, I guess, but. You know. I would agree. I mean, I uh, mentioned a something to I don't know, somebody after one of the meetings and talking about like, you know, when you build a new building in downtown, New Carlisle, or any other city for that matter, you want it to kind of go with the flow. I mean, not that it can't change, but you don't want a big glass, shiny superstructure in the middle of an old fashioned brick town like New Carlisle. It just doesn't go together. And that's the way I see it. I just think it's just crammed a little too tight. And I think the styles are a little too. Yeah, I've seen the styles. Some okay, well, no, they, we haven't seen their, their, what they are going to put here, but going and looking off of what they've already done in other places. So, but anyways, thank you. Next. Oh, I thought she was going up to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just holding our breath. <laughs> then you. I thought she was going. She pulled us off. All right, next. Uh, Jeff Morford, 4720 Scarf Road, Miami County. And as always, I want to start with I'm totally against any development on the property. I'm Garfin Lake due to environmental reasons. Uh, last meeting there were comments as to DDC management's planning and development within the zoning regulations, guidelines, building codes, and restrictions. And how can anyone expect DDC management to plan their development any differently as it is working within the existing codes and guidelines? If New Carlisle has any reservation concerning the size or scope of the DDC management plans, you have the tools to control what happens, how it happens, and yes, even if it happens. 
Number one, over the months, the annexation process has come up for conversation. Yes, Miami County statutorily must concede annexation if DDC management meets all criteria. But New Carlisle City Council has two votes to accept the annexation. Just vote no. Next, the second tool the City Council has available is the vote to change the zoning from agricultural to residential. Just vote no. Uh, <coughs> last week there were some examples of how DDC was working within the guidelines and gave it a, a few examples. I'm going to give exam another different example, maybe not exactly on point, but an example. My example is if you and your family go to a nice restaurant, order your meal and explain how you want it cooked, but the chef comes out and says he would be glad to cook your food, but he only cooks well, well done meals. He is still planning to cook your food, but not to your liking. You have an opportunity to get up and walk out. I appreciate your time. As always, I know you're not, it's not an easy job, and I appreciate everybody's help and patience. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All righty. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, I don't believe we have anything from uh, either uh, Charter View or the uh, Parks and Rec. And so we drop down to resolutions, none, ordinances, Ms. Burner, I'll hand it over to you. All right, ordinance 2022-29, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 1st, 2022. And ordinance amending a certain section of chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. You want me to read other business? Oh, please. Other business, the planning board will hold its meeting on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. The topics discussed will be community gardens, RPUDs, setbacks, and gun ranges as conditional uses. This will be held at Smith Park Shelter House at 6 p.m. And then open discussion for city-related matters. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, you know, Mr. Bridger already hit it. Somebody did. Thank you to the council members and uh, Mr. Kitko and everybody who set up the... Uh, a trash uh, cleanup day on Saturday. What was it bad? You look like uh, I set up the community cleanup, but of course my parents' 50th wedding anniversary was oh, having to be the same weekend, so I got to choose. Set it up and bounced. <laughs> man, smart I mean, man. Howie, it's 50. I mean, what do you got? Three more, maybe? What's that? Three more man. years at most. I mean, I've done that community cleanup since 2000. And we're not going to say. I wish I could have been there years ago, but I was in Tim City getting my teeth kicked in. Smart man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Okay, Lindsay, uh, like make a motion to excuse Mr. Cook for this evening. Second. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he informed me he wouldn't be here. Um, nothing, nothing horrible, but he just couldn't make it. Second was Eggleston. Yep. Yeah. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. I'll pass to 6-0. Anything else, Mr. Bond? I just have one quick question. I'm just kind of curious on the procedure. So we met with uh, Bethel Township that one meeting. Do we need to get back with them at some point in time? Or what's, That's for you guys a, to decide. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Okay. No. Yeah. laughs> I just didn't know what the expectation was. Or mm -hmm. if, uh, nope. OK. Yeah, I think we're going to move through with the expedited type two and probably remain have them remain in the township. Okay. Your turn. I just yeah, I'm just curious what yeah, the no problem. expectation was. So. Right, thank you, Mr. Westman. I think it was the last meeting. Somebody said that they contacted the EPA about our wastewater capacity. They said it was going to go up to eighty percent. And you guys said, no way. We came back and said it'd be up to 62%. Mm -hmm. Can we get an idea of how that would impact both revenue and expenses? Mm -hmm. How those extra yeah, 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 yeah. would uh, generate extra revenue and generate extra revenue? <coughs> we get an ultimate idea. Yeah, revenue is the easy part. The expenses will be just a little harder, but yeah, it's 
We'll just take a ratio of what we currently do. You, you want that done officially, Mr. Bridge? That's fine. Um, we'll look at water, too. Um, I don't want to put extra stuff on this, but we need to have a complete picture. And you did a fantastic job of breaking down that data about what it's going to, to do. So good job on that. That was great work you did. Um, but yeah, we can definitely get it done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Hagerson. Um, I just had a yeah, she got a things. list. Um, last year we had brought up to have the plaques made up for citizen mm -hmm. or whatever. And there were three people that were nominated or suggested. And I had come to my attention that two of these people do not live in the city limits, but they do a lot for the city. So is there something we can do to recognize them? She was looking this way. So I just wanted to look for you. <laughs> she was looking at you. I'm looking um, at you. <laughs> I mean, are they part of an organization? Pardon? Are they part of an organization? Um, Philly uh -huh. works at the library. And then Dana just, she works for. I mean, we obviously can't give them a citizen of the year award because they're not citizens of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, Dana brings food. I understand. The city. I mean, no fight. Totally understand. But uh, I didn't know if there was. Something I mean, if they were, I would say if they were part of some sort of nonprofit or something that operated inside the city, then we could recognize them through that particular organization. But um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I would agree with you. I don't know what you would, what you could do when you got the citizen. I mean, you can't get someone who doesn't live in the city. It's just all their stuff. Okay. I mean, you could publicly thank them. As, I, I just I didn't know if there was something that we could do to recognize them since they do a lot for the city. They just they don't live in the city. Mm -hmm. well, you said they bring food in the city. You mean to the food pantry? Uh, mm -hmm. She works at other food pantries and then brings mm -hmm. leftover food into the file off of the street. To the citizens? Yeah. Through the food pantry or yeah. by herself? By herself. Oh. And who is this? That is Dana. That was the last name. Okay. Any discussion on that, Council? Uh, maybe a. We could have the city maybe, maybe we could have Miss Burner, Mrs. Burner. <laughs> Type up something or you know appreciation letter or something and mm -hmm. mail out to it. It would come from council or um, council or council member. Right. So, yeah, I mean I think yeah. Or, I mean something like that might be appropriate. I mean I don't know. Some of the city award. Kind of thing. Well, let us do for a little bit and maybe address it at the next meeting. Okay. What's your next question? Um. All right. Yes. Um, I was going into Vandalia, and we have the issue with the 25 mile per hour sign coming into town, coming into town on the south end. And Vandalia has their 25 mile sign lit up. Great shift. That's because they just recently dropped it to yeah, 25 miles. It was 35. Yeah. And they, they don't, and they don't enforce it, so. Well, Thank you. Know if that Thank you. Know. <laughs> that, that would require a whole new sign, I'm assuming. Hmm. Did, did we pay for those, or did we get them through a grant? The the regular speed limit signs? Yeah. Oh, no, we all, we pay for all the metal mm -hmm. signs. That's part of the $40,000 sign. Yeah. <laughs> and no, no, that's not separate. <laughs> I need every penny on that line item. And more is got a solar thing on it. That yeah, it's, it's solar it operated. Uh, mm -hmm. I know what Peggy's talking about. They put them up there because they, they dropped their speed limit from 35 down. Talking about coming off of Ross Road, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is that one speed off of Ross no, 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 it's uh, down on the downtown. They dropped it on Ross Road. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, the 10th. Yeah. 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 I don't know what those cost. So you're wanting the permanent sign 
<coughs> that we have that, that, that yeah. flashes the speed. Yeah. You no, want it, it's, it's like it just like has lights around it. But there's flashes. lights around the. Right, but I mean, it's a permanent fixture. Yeah. 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 So the yeah, 25 so is permanent. It's just the lights around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're solar fed. Yeah. We'll yeah. look at a few options in the email council. Some of you guys can look at. Some sure. add on options. And they enforce it. Yeah. Huh? And they enforce that new speed limit. Yeah. <laughs> Where is your area concerned? Just that one on Main? Where else? Yeah. It's, it's just for yeah. dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll look at some prices and email you guys. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, man? Um, we have. Excuse me. Hey, we um, have that one. Sign already does that, don't we? That's a movable sign. If we don't have any stationary speed limit signs that just are lit up like the stop signs so it, or the, like the radar uh, bike sign path. Yeah, these aren't like radar signs. Okay. They're just an illuminated yeah. permit yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know what main they have. Hmm. Um, last meeting, someone from the Parks and Rec asked if we could think about moving the. Uh, Committee reports to before the comments from members of public. Is that just something we need to we need to make a motion to change? We have to move the council. council. Yeah, I, I mean, I I don't want to see change. I mean, that's the way it's been for a long time. I mean, it's also in the charter that way, so it would take a charter change too. I don't think it's in the charter. It's in the rules of county. It is in the charter. I thought the charter. Yeah. But each council member can introduce legislation. If you want, like if Ms. Eggleston wanted to introduce that, yeah. she can call me. We can, Jake can get it drafted. And then what happens is each council member has to put their name on the bottom of each legislation they do. And you guys can bring it forth and then it can be voted on. So you guys have your options like that. Well, it would make sense to have the comments after the committee reports because somebody might have a question on there were committee reports. She don't need to make a motion. She can just any council member can. She can present it. Yeah, yeah, she can present it. What does well, it take to change in the agenda? Just the rules of council. You'd have to do a resolution amending the rules of council. Okay. Yeah. Just give me a call in the week before we'll coming. Okay. Anything else? No. no thank you, Mr. Mom. Anything? Yeah. Move to adjourn. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grant? Yes. Seven, six, zero. Right. Thank you.